Hello guys, nice to see you. How are you doing? Hello, everything is fine. How are you? I'm okay too, thank you. <clears throat> so how was your spring break? Unfortunately, it was short. Sure, that I agree. But need to work also a little bit during semester, so we are back up and running. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. So last time we finished our discussion on the um, introduction of energy of magnetic field, which is accumulated in um, inductor, uh, like element of electric circuit, which is responsible for um, its uh, inductance. And uh, uh, also we consider uh, oscillations inside um, so-called RL circuit, so resistor inductor uh, circuits, um, considering that, um, sorry, we didn't, so it was, it was previously, so we uh, considered the oscillations in uh, CL uh, circuits, capacitor, inductor, uh, uh, electrical circuit, um, assuming that electrical resistance is zero, so we didn't have any uh, decay of oscillations, um, and uh, it was kind of conversion of electric energy accumulated in a capacitor into magnetic energy accumulated um, in uh, the inductor, uh, and it was repeating back and of course. So today um, we are approaching another important um, topic, which is alternating current, and uh, uh, need to understand that um, so far we considered only DC current, um, current which does not change its direction. So that's uh, an important definition. Um, so the thing is that it can change its uh, magnitude. So we can observe some uh, changes in the magnitude of electric current. So it can go uh, up um, to some maximum value, then go down to zero and again um, up to maximum value. However, um, it doesn't change the direction. So alternating uh, current is that case when not only magnitude is changing, but also um, is changing the direction of the current. What we need to highlight before we proceed for some quantitative analysis, that alternative current is really widely applicable. So actually all our power system is based on alternative current. So there are reasons for that. It was developed in that way that uh, uh, we can uh, change in uh, with simple uh, instruments called uh, transformers. It, um, we can change voltage from high to low, from low to high. And uh, that is really easy to do when we have alternating current as opposite to DC current. So all electric power system, our um, Power outlets, they provide AC voltage. And uh, when we hook up some um, electrical load to our power outlets, we deal with alternating current inside these uh, electric circuits and wires which form this electric circuit. So uh, it is quite common around us and definitely we need to um, learn um, better how to quantify this um, AC current and uh, underline certain features which are unique for alternating current uh, circuits in comparison to uh, DC uh, circuits. So that's our goal for uh, today. And uh, let me switch to our 
slides. So um, let us first talk about instantaneous value of AC voltage. So let consider that we have some um, instantaneous potential difference. And uh, it is given as a function of time. So we have some maximum potential difference between terminals times um, sinus omega t. Sinus omega t. So here we need to highlight that this instantaneous values of DC, um, uh, sorry, or this instantaneous value of AC voltage uh, changes its sign. Uh, so for the first half of the period, it can be considered as positive. And for the other half of the period, it can be considered as negative. Um, so that is very important definition for alternating current um, circuits. And uh, this omega is two pi, this is kind of angular frequency, or it's equal to pi divided by, oops, uh, by T period of the uh, AC uh, signal. So again, a reminder, I guess I told you this previously, um, the frequency of AC like um, current in our power system is uh, 50 Hertz. So the same frequency is um, used in uh, all over uh, Europe and Eurasia. Um, in United States and Japan, frequency is uh, 60 Hertz. So now our first step will be to consider what is going to happen in our AC circuit, which consists um, like some um, just electrical resistor. So it will be some um, AC voltage, power supply, and um, active resistor. So this is our electrical circuit. It's active resistor. This is AC power supply, which provides some uh, AC voltage, delta V maximum times sinus omega T. And here we will have a voltage drop over uh, this resistor. Delta VR. So delta VR uh, stands for um, instantaneous voltage drop over active resistor R in this um, AC electrical circuit. <clears throat> um, first of all, we need to highlight that um, Kirchhoff's uh, loop uh, rule is applicable also for AC circuits, and there uh, it just operates with instantaneous voltage drops over all um, elements of the electric circuit. So according to Kirchhoff's loop rule, for instantaneous uh, voltage drops, we can write that delta V minus I um, R times resistance R is equal to zero. So here, <clears throat> this a small i um, r stands for instantaneous electric current which uh, flows through the resistor. 
So this expression is valid at any moment of time uh, <clears throat> and at like, any instant. And uh, for each of these um, instant, we can apply Kirchhoff's uh, loophole. So IR, this instantaneous electric um, current, obviously will be um, equal to instantaneous voltage divided by resistance of the resistor. And that will be equal to um, delta B maximum times sinus omega T divided by R. Um, or in other form can be written as I maximum times sinus omega T. So it also changes um, with time, uh, electric current and with direction because sinus omega T can be as positive a positive and negative. So um, this is the expression for um, instantaneous electric current in this uh, circuit, means electric current through the resistor R. Um, also, we can write, <clears throat> uh, and of course, uh, this uh, maximum uh, current is equal to maximum voltage, uh, potential difference divided by R. So we can also express um, this instantaneous voltage drop over uh, resistor, delta VR is equal um, uh, actually um, quite straightforward instantaneous electric current times uh, resistance R. <clears throat> and that will be I maximum times resistance R times sinus omega T. So what is important to um, highlight here, uh, we need to take a look on time dependence of um, voltage and um, current through this resistor and voltage drop over this resistor. Let me share with you my screen. Okay, so here we have on axis Y, we have instantaneous values for electric current and um, voltage drop over resistor. Also, here we have time. So let's take a look first on, on uh, voltage. Um, it follows this sinusoidal uh, dependence on time. So it reaches maximum after half of its period. Period goes from here to here. So during half of the period, it remains positive. Then it goes through zero and becomes negative, reaches its maximum negative value, and again comes back to, to zero. Um, this same, like very similar uh, behavior we see for electric current. It also reaches uh, maximum, then goes to zero, changes its direction, and uh, comes back to zero after one period. So uh, one during one period of uh, the oscillation, we come back to the initial set of conditions uh, for uh, electric current and um, instantaneous values of electric current and uh, voltage drop over resistor. What is important here to underline that, as you um, remember from our um, like discussion on the uh, slide uh, before I started, sharing this screen, um, both voltage drop over resistor and electric current 
they are determined by uh, their time dependence is defined by sinus times omega t. That means that um, they are in the same phase. So there is no phase difference between um, electric current and voltage drop over um, active resistor in uh, AC electric circuit. So you mean, so what does it mean? So first of all, you can see that the maximum of um, electric current and um, voltage, they are reached in the same moment of time. So in the same moment of time, they go to zero. And again, they reach in the same moment of time, their maximum values. So this fact that um, phase shift or the absence of phase shift in this particular case uh, can be um, well um, described by so-called uh, phasers. Uh, so phaser is a vector which magnitude, um, so we have here two phasers. So first phaser is uh, for voltage and second for current. So phaser is a vector with magnitude, which is uh, equal to maximum value of the quantity it describes. So for voltage is delta V maximum, for current is I maximum. And it rotates counterclockwise around its origin, uh, which is located in the origin of the system of coordinates here, um, with the angular uh, frequency omega. So it kind of rotates counterclockwise. And uh, uh, projection of phaser towards this y-axis gives instantaneous values of the physical quantity which it describes. Um, so means instantaneous value for uh, voltage drop over resistor and current uh, through the resistor. So um, if we claim that there is no phase shift between um, voltage and uh, current, uh, that means that uh, phasers for voltage and current are pointed in the same direction. You see there is no angle between these two vectors. And when they rotate <clears throat> counterclockwise, they rotate with the same angular uh, velocity, means that they are always um, remain parallel to each other. So that means that we do not have any uh, phase shift between um, electric current and voltage drop or active resistance. Let me stop sharing this now. So that what we need to know about active resistor um, first. And uh, um, also we need to discuss uh, some average power, which is um, dissipated over um, active resistor during the uh, like one period uh, of the AC uh, signal. <clears throat> so obviously average current through the um, resistor will be equal to zero because um, we have half of period uh, positive and half of period negative current. If we get, since it's symmetric, if we get some average value, we will get uh, zero. However, that's not true because, um, with respect to electric power, which is um, delivered to the resistor in this AC uh, circuit, and obviously, which is dissipated in form of heat over this resistor. Uh, because um, this power, which dissipates in form of heat, does not depend on the direction of electric current. Uh, as you remember, uh, uh, power is equal to I squared times R. So we have I um, electric current in second power means that um, direction of electric current doesn't matter. It always, regardless of its direction, there will be dissipation of heat. <clears throat> so um, let us uh, try to determine um, average uh, value uh, of electric power, uh, which is 
dissipated on the resistor in this RC circuit in the time interval of one period. Was that E average will be equal one over time period means our uh, time interval means our period integral from zero to T of um, instantaneous current second power times R over time. So integral over time. So we know the expression for um, uh, instantaneous value of electric current. So that will be here one over T times integral from zero to T uh, times I maximum square times R times sinus square omega T dt. And that should be equal. Uh, we can take out from the integral these guys. They are constant and do not depend on time. So it will be I maximum square times R divided by T integral from zero to T sinus square omega T dt. Um, so we can now represent this sinus square omega T in a different form so we can integrate <coughs> easier. So it will be um, I maximum square times R divided by T integral from zero to T. And here, instead of sinus square omega T, we can write one minus cosinus two omega T divided by two. And that here will be DT. So we will actually have two integrals. So it will be I maximum square times R divided by T times um, let us take this two from denominator also out from the integral. So it will be two T. Um, then integral from zero to T DT minus integral <clears throat> from zero to T cosinus to omega T dt. So now, first integral is easy to get. I maximum square R divided by two T. So here will be just period <coughs> T standing for the first integral. And for the uh, second one, uh, it will be minus sinus two omega T divided by two omega from zero to T. Um, so uh, here is a small T is time, that's our variable. So if we substitute here um, zero, it will sign a zero gives us zero. If we substitute uh, T, it will also give us uh, zero because um, as you remember from previous slides, um, let put it, write it here. T period is equal to two pi divided by omega. So if we substitute uh, in this argument of sinus, so we have two omega instead of small t, we will substitute two pi divided by 
omaha omaha will be canceled that will be four pi so it means that it um doesn't matter uh, what we substitute as a zero or uh, t um, sinus uh, to omaha t uh, will be equal to zero so um, we will have actually just zero minus zero so that's why this uh, term which we have to subtract from um, period t is equal to zero and uh, taking this into account we will get i maximum square times r divided by two times t and here will be just period t so we can cancel out this period uh, t and we get eventually for the average power uh, dissipated over um, active resistor in AC circuit during one period uh, equal to I maximum square times R divided by two. So now we can introduce um, such term as I RMS, IRMS stands for root mean square current. That will be equal to um, so this value we need to uh, introduce in that way that P average can be represented as I R M S squared times R. Uh, so instead of dealing with in instantaneous values of electric current in um, AC um, circuit, it is more convenient to determine some uh, parameter of this AC current, which is I R M S, and use it as equivalent of some DC current, which would um, deliver the same amount of um, energy to uh, this resistor if it would be not AC, but DC current. So from here, we can see that this should be equal to P average, square root of P average divided by R. So now, if we substitute instead of P um, average, this expression which we derive for P average, it will be I R M S equal to square root of I maximum square times R divided by two R r and r we cancel out and here we get i maximum divided by square root of two so that is um, the uh, equation with which you uh, calculate i rms um, kind of equivalent value of DC current, which will deliver uh, the same amount of um, energy or cause dissipation of the same amount of heat over resistor um, as it happens um, when uh, AC current with amplitude I max is running through it. Kind of makes um, life easier for calculation of um, power dissipated on um, resistor. So when I was talking about energy means energy per, per time, which means um, power per unit time. So now we introduce these key parameters which are relevant for resistor, active resistor in AC circuit. 
and we can proceed further with other circuit, uh, AC circuit uh, elements. So let, let us consider now um, inductor in such AC circuit. So we have inductor with inductance L and also this AC power supply. So delta V is equal to delta maximum times sinus omega T. Um, and here will be VL voltage, like delta VL voltage drop over this induct. So again, according to the Kirchhoff's uh, loop uh, rule, we can write that for instantaneous um, voltage in this circuit, uh, delta V plus delta VL should be equal to zero. And uh, <clears throat> we remember for from the previous discussion um, of self-induction uh, that voltage drop over uh, inductor can be uh, represented as uh, minus delta VL is equal to minus L times first derivative of um, electric uh, current. In this case, we have uh, instantaneous uh, value for um, electric current flowing through this induct, DIL over DT. So if we substitute it here, we can write that delta V is equal to L DIL over DT. And that <clears throat> should be equal to uh, delta V maximum, oops, V maximum sinus omega T. So now we want to get electric uh, current as a function of time. And uh, uh, solving this um, equation for DIL, D I L, we can get that it will be delta V maximum divided by L times sinus omega T. So obviously this is um, different here is DT. Uh, so in order to get the final expression for um, instantaneous electric current, we need to integrate this expression. <clears throat> and uh, keep in mind that this term is constant. So this is maximum value of potential difference um, divided by constant inductance. So we can take this out of the integral. So instantaneous electric current through the inductor L is equal to delta V maximum divided by L integral sinus omega T dt. So this integral gives us uh, minus delta V maximum divided by omega times L times cosinus omega T. Uh, here we can make some the geometrical transformation, considering that cosinus omega t can be represented as minus sinus omega t minus pi over two, one half of the pi. 
So if we substitute now this expression uh, for cosinus omega t in our equation here, we can write for uh, the final expression for um, instantaneous current in a convenient form, so we can easily uh, compare it to um, instantaneous voltage. So that will be um, delta V maximum divided by <clears throat> omega L times sinus omega T minus pi divided by two. So now we can write also here next to it expression for instantaneous um, voltage over this uh, inductor that will be delta V maximum times sinus omega T. So we see that we don't look at the um, this constant um, coefficients in front of uh, sinus function because they are different since we operate, we express different parameters, but we care about um, time dependence and time dependence is defined by this sinus, uh, like this periodic function, sinus omega t. However, for electric current in this case, for instantaneous value of electric current through the um, inductor, inductor as opposite to the active resistor, um, there is this phase shift with pi over two, uh, which means that uh, electric current through the uh, inductor, first of all, it's out of phase in comparison to um, voltage drop over inductor. And uh, to be more specific, it kind of lags behind uh, voltage. So um, voltage uh, is by pi over two uh, or 90 degrees, like power pi over two um, radian or um, 90 degrees uh, ahead of electric current. So uh, let me share again this PowerPoint slide. So that's what we have uh, here. Again, we have time dependence of uh, instantaneous voltage and current. So we see this is our voltage. Um, and uh, now the maximum value for voltage is reached earlier than maximum value for current. So means that these guys are uh, possess some phase shift between each other. And we see since the uh, uh, voltage reaches maximum value first, um, current is lagging behind uh, voltage. And the uh, phase shift between them is uh, 90 degrees. So we can clearly see this uh, here on this phasers uh, diagram. So this is voltage phase diagram, and this is a current phase diagram. So um, they both rotate counterclockwise, but um, there is right angle between these phasers and um, phaser uh, responsible for um, electric current uh, is lagging behind. So um, by 90 degrees uh, with respect to phaser responsible for um, voltage a drop over uh, inductor. So let me uh, probably um, summarize our today's discussion. So we introduced the concept of um, AC electric circuits. Uh, 
and AC current in general. Um, we considered that as opposite to DC current, AC changes in direction and magnitude. Uh, and uh, um, in the case of active resistor, if we come back here, we had um, no phase shift between voltage, uh, voltage and current, and their phasers were parallel and remain parallel all the time while they rotate counterclockwise on this phase diagram with the angular frequency on. Um, so um, that is not valid for. inductor in AC circuit. We have shown that uh, for inductor, there is some phase shift between voltage and current. To be more specific, that um, electric uh, current is lagging by 90 degrees, like there is phase shift 90 degrees, uh, with respect to the voltage drop over inductor. So um, that specifies that we have some specific like different type of um, resistance. So we have, as opposite to active resistor, we have uh, so-called reactive resistor, or uh, to be more specific, um, reactive inductor uh, resistor. And uh, that's why we can introduce some additional parameter as um, inductive reactive resistance. So uh, maximum current, which flows through the uh, inductor, is equal to delta B maximum divided by omega L. So in comparison, like analog uh, situation for an active resistor, we had um, I maximum is equal to delta V maximum divided by R. So um, that means that this product of angular frequency times uh, inductance L uh, gives us some equivalent of resistance, but in this particular case, it's called reactive resistance. And that is delta V maximum. We can mark it as um, X L, uh, reactive, uh, inductive reactive resistance, uh, which is equal, oops, L is equal to omega times L. So the units for reactive inductive uh, resistance uh, is also ohms uh, as it would be for uh, active resistor. Uh, however, the key difference between active and reactive is the fact that in the case of active resistor in AC circuit, there is no phase shift uh, between um, current and voltage. And if we consider in particular inductive reactive resistance, um, um, there is phase shift 90 degrees and uh, uh, electric current is lagging behind uh, voltage drop over uh, inductor. Uh, that is the key difference between them. And uh, uh, also what is important here to underline that active resistance R is frequency independent. It's just defined by resistance of um, as active resistor, which is in the AC circuit. However, uh, obviously here we have linear increase of um, inductive reactance, uh, inductive reactive resistance uh, with increase of frequency. So when we increase frequency, um, inductive reactance increases. And that actually comes from the um, self-inductance so we uh, know that this induced electromotive force is proportional to the rate 
how um, electric current is changing. So the higher frequency, the higher rate of changing um, electric current, that will cause larger induced electromotive force, which prevents change of uh, electric current. That's why um, it's um, reactance, like inductive uh, reactance to AC uh, circuit will increase as um, frequency increases. So it has quite straightforward um, explanations, this frequency uh, dependence. So if we want to um, express uh, voltage drop, delta VL over um, this inductor, <clears throat> we need to uh, write the following. So it will be minus L, first derivative of instantaneous electric current over um, time. And um, now we know expression for instantaneous electric current. This is um, it. So we can take first derivative over time. And that will be, um, so maybe we can consider the previous one uh, with, with cosines. Yeah, this one. So if we consider um, this one, um, then take first derivative we will get minus delta V maximum times sinus omega T. And uh, uh, in other form, this maximum voltage uh, potential difference can be expressed as minus A I maximum times XL, the inductive reactance of the uh, inductor in AC circuit times sinus omega T. So this is pretty much everything what we need to discuss about um, active and reactive uh, inductive uh, resistors um, in AC circuit. And uh, uh, further, we will finish this discussion with considering capacitor in AC circuit and also will introduce capacitance uh, reactance uh, for AC um, uh, current. <clears throat> if you have any questions, you're welcome. So we introduced AC circuit. Uh, with active resistor, with inductor, consider how voltage drop and electric current uh, through active resistor and uh, inductor will depend on time, figure out that there is no phase shift between voltage uh, drop over active resistor and current, uh, and there is phase shift between uh, voltage drop and current in the case of uh, inductor, which is uh, 90 degrees, uh, so electric current through inductor is lagging behind the uh, voltage drop over inductor uh, by 90 degrees uh, or pi over two uh, radians. So this is the key difference. And uh, uh, we can introduce this new parameter, uh, reactance, uh, so inductive reactance, um, XL uh, equal to omega times L. Uh, means that this equivalent of opposition to um, AC current uh, in active resistor, it's just resistance R. In uh, case of inductor, it is uh, inductive reactance. Uh, and this inductive reactance um, increases linearly with increase of frequency, while um, active resistor remains constant. So we will continue this discussion next time. Uh, we'll focus on a capacitor in AC circuit. Uh, that will be on Wednesday. So thank you very much for attention and have a good evening. See you on Wednesday.
Thank you. 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 Thank you.